Hey guys, this is Kenjido and welcome to another MakeShot Pro video. Today we're going to talk about clipping in images. Now, clipping, when I'm saying that, it's kind of, you know, has a lot of terms. You know, some people will call it blown out highlights, other people might call it saturation. Uh, clipping can occur at the top end when you have pixels that are too bright and you have no detail or it can even occur at the bottom end where there's areas of the image that are too dark and so then you also lose detail. What I'm going to cover today is just um, you know ways you can detect clipping at different stages of your creation process as well as how we can do it in PaintShop Pro if that's kind of your only option and then at the very end I'll cover um, some way or one way at least that you can overcome uh, clipping if you're trying to increase the exposure of your image. Now I'm going to be you know talking about clipping in terms of it being an aspect of your image that you want to avoid primarily like I mentioned earlier because uh, you lose detail in those regions. However, I just want to also specify that there are situations where clipping is perfectly fine and absolutely contributes to an image that you're trying to create. A perfect example would be high key or low key images. Those by intent are meant to have extremely, um, you know, blown out areas of the image, clipped in parts of the image, either bright or dark. But in this case, what we're trying to alleviate and what I'm going to show is making sure we have as much detail as possible to work with and in more cases really trying to increase the dynamic range of the image. So let's get to it. So now clipping in terms of prevention, I would say starts all the way at the camera. So if your camera has the feature, I would check the manual to see how you can turn on what would be something like highlights detection or some type of clipping detection. Usually these manifest as um, you know, a blinking sort of overlay on your image if you have in fact clipped your image. Raw editors, like um, I use Canon cameras, so I use Digital Photo Pro, and that in there also has a feature by right-clicking and selecting Highlight Shadow Warning. And once again, it just does an overlay to show where the clipped regions are. So now in PaintShop Pro, uh, there isn't a specific tool, at least that I'm aware of, that you can just run that is going to do a similar effect of just overlaying you know, an identification of highlights or blown out darks on your image. One quick and dirty strategy that I've used in the past is just by going to adjust brightness contrast and then starting with the base settings of zero and zero, just starting to decrease the brightness. And if you notice that there's an area where detail, you know, like if it were bright, for example, and detail is not being exposed by you decreasing the brightness, there's a good chance that that whole region is clipped. You can also always use the droplet tool and if you ever see straight all 255 for everything, at least from a brightness point of view, that's fully clipped. From a dark point of view, anything that's pure zero is fully clipped in the darks. Another method I recently discovered, which I thought was kind of nifty, and this was mentioned on one of the Paint Shop Pro uh, forum, the Corel forums, that if when you're using the levels tool, if you drag, you know, the levels toolbar, you can see the effect on the image. However, if you hold control while you're doing this, you get sort of a different view here. And what this is showing, or at least attempting to show, is the clipping region. So anything that's white, for example, is going to be sort of the highlights being clipped. Now, if you do the same from the bottom end and you start dragging, it kind of does the same thing, sim similar rule of white indicates clipping, except now it's representing the darks instead of the highlights. To try to mimic what some of the previous tools have done or in-camera effects have done, I have created a couple of scripts um, that can create sort of this overlay that you can uh, just run and then what it'll do is it'll produce a new layer on your original image that you can then turn on and off. So it has a very similar feel to uh, the in-camera or the raw editor type of detection. Now, I will say that the approach of being able to create this sort of new layer relies on the thresholds tool, the adjust brightness contrast thresholds tool, which in this context sort of has a plus or minus one 
kind of one one level of luminance to it so it isn't going to be perfect but it's going to be within one pixel of accuracy and this script will be available along with all my previous scripts for uh, folks who become patrons on my patreon page so now i'd like to cover just a quick technique for how to increase the exposure of an image without affecting the highlight region. So if we take our Yosemite um, picture that I have here as an example, even though the highlights are already blown out, what I want to do is increase the e exposure of this region down here without further losing detail in sort of this lighter region. Now there's many ways to do this in PaintShop Pro. There's a lot of different tools that you can try. Some work better than others given a, you know what, what the image is and what you're trying to do. Generally speaking, one technique that I like to do is using luminance masks. So the way we can do this is just by duplicating the original layer and then selecting a mask from image. And so this is our one image and we'll choose source luminance for that mask, hit okay. And then what we'll see is what got created, if I turn off the background, is the you know brighter pixels have been, for the most part, isolated to this layer group. And that's what I can see. So if I turn it off, that's all that's there. If I turn the background on, it looks like the exact regular image. So what we've done is separated the lights from the darks, essentially, in this case. And that's going to give us a lot of freedom. So I'll rename those layers just to make it a little bit more clear. And then what we can do is select the dark layer. And then from here, you can apply whatever, um, you know, brightness contrast tool that you like to use to affect exposure. Like in my case, what I like to use is levels. So dark layer is selected. I'm going to drag the middle slider over just to kind of get a little bit more luminance in this region below. All right, and then um, this kind of had the effect of making the uh, grassy area look a little bit pasty. So I'm just going to also adjust the hue and saturation and bring the saturation down a little bit. This is definitely gonna create a much more muted picture, right? It's not as bright and colorful as it was originally, but um, it, 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 it's a little bit, little bit more, I think what I would appreciate at least in this context. So. So here now we have increased the exposure while leaving this sort of brighter region less affected. If we turn off the mask, we'll see, you know, all the effects that we had had a much more, you know, intense effect. It's, it's brighter, it's even less saturated, but by bringing this region back on, we kind of bring a lot of that detail and less of that luminance has been affected. One thing that's really nice about this approach is the level of control that you have uh, on that layer of separation between the highlights and the darks. Like, and we can control that by modifying the mask. Like, for example, um, as you can see, um, you know, this, this region isn't completely opaque, which means that adjustments that I made to the background or the darks layer have an effect on, um, you know, what ultimately shows through. But if I wanted that effect to be less, like I wanted this region to be much more the mass layer instead of the layer that I call darks, I can simply go to a you know brightness contrast. I'm gonna choose levels again, and in this case, as long as I you know make you know this region up here that we want to keep unaffected brighter, then in effect what I'm doing is separating this much more distinctly from the background layer. And all of this is being done while still maintaining a very natural transition from the darks to the lights. Like there's no hard halo created by using selections that you'd have to try to blend later, especially even in an image as complex as this, that the, the luminance mask really handles all of that detail very nicely. So that's it for this one. Um, I hope you learned something new about clipping if you haven't already or that there's some new techniques for working with exposure with photographs in PaintShop Pro. I haven't made a lot of photograph centric type videos in a while, spending a lot of time in vector graphics, just having fun with that. Um, but if there's something in the area of photograph features or capabilities in PaintShop Pro that you're interested in learning, feel free to leave a comment in that uh, in the comment section below. 
If you'd like to get updates of new content, content that I post, check the subscribe button. And if you'd like to support me and the channel, check out my Patreon page, which is on the link on the TV. And I'll see you guys next time.